Hello everyone, this video is about Federico's journey to inventing the microprocessor. In 1968, Federico Fagin created the self-aligned MOS silicon gate technology, which basically is the foundation for the microprocessor and the computers that we know. He relays that he had the desire to make a product that was technologically unparalleled, that was sort of on a different level. I, I had the desire to, to, for this technology to actually uh, be second to none. Mm -hmm. And in the end, Federico did just that. He made a product that was second to none and has been used for decades and decades since. So when he achieved this, did he know or did he have an understanding of the magnitude of what he had done, of how it would impact the trajectory of technological development? I, I, yeah. I, you know, when you have something that is ten times better, than something else. Yeah. I mean, you, you got you got something, right? I mean, I was a kid, but still, you know, I was not stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Transistors were previously made using aluminum, and Federico describes that he started to use polysilicon, and that completely exponentially increased the quality and the speed that the transistor could operate at. When you put billions of those transistors together, you can make a very interesting computer. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and that's exactly what was at the heart of the digital revolution. However, in those days, the switches were not very good. They, they were not fast enough, they were too big, and uh, they consumed too much power. And so the idea was to reduce all the parasitics, you know, all the elements that were taken away from the, fun the pure function of the switch. I decided to use uh, polysilicon uh, actually, instead of aluminum, polysilicon, because the aluminum, which was what the experiment of Bauer later on, I found out uh, it was made with, the, the aluminum could not withstand the high temperature necessary oh, okay. for the process. So, so you could you could just make some experiments show that the, that, that the idea basically worked, but they were not useful unless okay. you could do it in a you know in a manufacturing process. And so, by using polysilicon, it was possible now to create a, uh, you know, a self-aligned transistor with okay. a silicon gate. Uh, and uh, with that, I was able to achieve about five times the speed for the same oh. power dissipation okay. and half the size of the transistor. Yeah. So all of a sudden, we had a factor of 10 technology much more powerful than mm -hmm. what was there before yeah. for the same cost. So you can make a microprocessor yeah. and, and many yeah. other devices. And that technology, it took a little while yeah. for it to be adopted, but, but by, you know, five years later, it was adopted by the entire industry. Mm -hmm. And it was the, basically the technology that allowed all this you know, uh, enormous, uh, enormous growth mm -hmm. in the technology to occur. In fact, it, it was used up and it's still used today, yeah. But, yeah. But, uh, but there was no other way of doing transistor until the last five years or you know, eight years when uh, you know as you go smaller and smaller you cannot use the um, the polysilicon and the ox silicon dioxide because they have characteristics that uh, are not sufficient yeah. to increase the uh, performance so so now the transistors of today are much more complex structures okay. but of course they are much smaller which allows to pack more per chip okay. and therefore continue the increase in performance yeah. with time which is you know generally known as Moore's Law. I asked Federico about some of the unexpected difficulties that he encountered in refining his model. The original uh, uh, material that, that, that I used was uh, amorphous silicon, silicon mm -hmm. that was deposited uh, in a vacuum chamber. Uh, but that amorphous silicon actually would break at the oxide steps. Okay. So, so uh, you know, so myself and, uh, and uh, another uh, person and another engineer, uh, uh, Tom Klein, we figured out that by using uh, polysilicon instead of amorphous silicon, we could actually have step coverage, much more step coverage. Mm -hmm. uh, then we found that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, aluminum could also break, uh, but then we used a way, a way to smooth the oxide by using high level of phosphorus, which were also very important 
to reduce the contamination of the silicon the, you know, as a final process before you would seal the entire structure. Okay. So all those tricks were found along the way yeah. that made the, the, the process uh, highly reliable and, uh, and, and have all the characteristics. Federico went on to find two companies. Zilog, the first, was the first company completely dedicated to the microprocessor, and the second, Synaptics, created many of the touchscreens that we still use in our technology today. If you'd like to hear more of Federico's discussion of the microprocessor, I will link our full conversation in the description below. Thank you so much for watching.